Okay, domain and range. If you're not quite sure what these words mean and you're studying the topic of functions, then the purpose of this video is to get you to understand the domain and range uh, a little bit better. It's actually, they're not too difficult to understand <clears throat> in their general sense, but this um, uh, these words here, domain and range, um, are really uh, important in the your um, study of something called functions, okay? So if you're in algebra, you're probably studying, um, if you're interested in this topic, you're studying the concept of functions. And functions go along with the, even a bigger su subtopic, or functions are a subtopic of a bigger topic called relations. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that in this uh, video because that's a, you know, this is a whole study in and of itself. But if you're interested about uh, domain and range, then of course you're studying these topics here. Okay, so let's just get um, let's get right to it. So let's just um, write a function down. Okay, so a function could look something like this: f of x equals um, x squared plus uh, two. Okay, so a function is basically just a rule. All right. Now, when we look at this function here, okay, the x is going to be our input, all right? We have input values. So I can find, for example, f of two for this particular function. That means I'm gonna input two everywhere I see an x. So in this particular uh, function, it would be two squared plus two. Okay, so I saw wherever an x is, I'm gonna replace it with what my input value is. In this case, it's two. So I'm kind of assuming that you have a basic understanding of functions. Again, if you don't, I have plenty of other videos on my channel. You might want to take a look at that. Um, some of those other videos on functions and relations kind of bolster up your understanding there, and then we can really study domain and range uh, better. But let's assume that you have a good idea of what I'm talking about right now. Now let's take a look at um, this function okay a little bit differently right and this is a lot of teachers like to use this model it's kind of a, a really good model of explaining domain and range all right let's kind of do it this way and let's think of, of uh, like a machine okay and a particular machine where we input numbers into this machine okay and then we're going to get output values all right so this particular function, okay, the rule is, hey, whatever numbers we plug in, what we're going to do is we're going to square whatever values and add 2 to them, and that's going to be our output value. So if I input a 2, let's just imagine there's a 2 here, we just kind of feed it to this machine, we throw it in, the machine is going to take that 2, we're going to square it and then add 2. Okay, so in this case, we're doing the same thing as what I'm doing over here, right? I'm gonna end up with two squared, which is four plus two or six. So in this particular machine, if I throw in the two into this particular um, little function machine, if you will, I'm gonna end up with a six, all right? So right now we can already define domain and range. All right? Domain is simply our input values. Now there's a little bit more to it in a second, but let's just keep it really simple, okay? The domain are the values that are our input values into a function. The output values are the range. That's all the domain and range are. But again, it's a, it's a, there's more to it than that. You know, we can, we can go deeper into it and I'm gonna do that uh, right now. So <clears throat> technically the domain Okay, you can think of it as the input values that we put into a function is the set of all input values. So the domain is all numbers, okay, or all values that we can input into our machine. Let's just say that, okay, I'm kind of <laughs> not using technical mathematical language here, but I, I want to give you an idea of how to understand this, okay? So the domain is a set of all values that we can input to our machine. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, there are some values, okay, 
there could be values that we don't want to stick into our machine. It, it will, or it will kind of break the machine. Okay. It's like, you're probably thinking to yourself, what, what am I talking about? Okay. In this particular example, I'm going to, um, it's, it's hard to see. So I'm going to give you another ex uh, function machine example. Let's say I have this function machine. Okay. The square root of X. Okay. So that would be this function f of x is equal to the square root of x. Okay, so what we're looking at as a machine here for a second, right? So we're going to input values, which is our domain, and then we're going to have output values, which is our range, right? So this is the range, and this is the domain. So the domain is our input values, but the input values that we can plug in without breaking the machine. So this particular example. Okay, let's do a couple examples that, well, let's do an ex example of an uh, input value that's okay. So let's say I've plugged in a 16 into this machine. So what that would do is says, okay, take your input value and take the square root of it. So the square root of 16, that output value would be 4. Technically speaking, it's plus, a f uh, plus 4 and minus 4. Okay. No problems, right? So I was able to input this value into this machine and it produced a nice output value. So 16 would be kind of, um, would be uh, allowed in my domain. So think of the domain almost as like a team. Um, and say, okay, 16, you know, you didn't break the machine, so you can join up the domain. <laughs> now, how about we do something else? How about negative nine, all right? So if you have your calculator handy, uh, go ahead and try to take the square root of negative nine. All right, take take go ahead and put negative nine. Try to take the square root of it. If you have your little, your calculator there, you're going to find out your calculator is going to say error. Okay, it, your calculator is not going to understand that. If you're using a really uh, sophisticated science um, graphing calculator and you know what you're doing, it will it would give you an, a particular answer. But most basic calculators are you're going to tell you, I, I don't understand this because the square root of negative nine is, is you can't calculate that in the real number system. Okay. So again, I'm focusing my conversation here with you for those students that are probably taking like algebra one, uh, just if you don't really know what the domain and range are, then you're probably at that more algebra one level, which means that you're working with real numbers. So in other words, you don't know, or your calculator doesn't know what the square root of negative nine is. That's actually what we call a complex number. But if we plug it into this machine, because you get an error, negative nine effectively like breaks the machine. It's not going to work in the machine. The machine's the output value is going to be like a question mark. Like I don't know how to calculate that. Okay. So this is really important. So negative nine would not be a part of the domain, okay? Because it's a value that will not run in our machine. So the only values that are gonna run in this particular machine are basically positive numbers. Anything that's not negative, okay? Zero is okay, because if I ask you to take the square root of zero, that's just zero, all right? So when we talk about domain and range, we have to kind of put limit, um, limitations and and rules on them. So in this particular, um, let me kind of erase some of this stuff here because we're getting kind of busy with some things. But in this particular example, the domain, we would kind of describe in, uh, as all numbers that are positive or zero, okay? Now, there's a fancier way to describe that in mathematics. That's all positive real numbers, and x is greater than or equal to zero, et cetera. I'm not really focusing on that. We can do other, I could do other videos on this. I'm just trying to get you to understand the essence of what domain and range are. Okay, so the domain in this particular example would be all numbers are not gonna break this, break the machine, okay? In this case, it's just all positive numbers, okay? Like the square root of 16, that's okay, okay? You can actually put any positive number in, like into your calculator, like try to find out what the square root of seven is. That's gonna be a decimal, but it's gonna work, right? You're gonna be able to use your calculator and do that. Now, 
So this is an example of what the domain is, okay? There are other conditions as well, which I'm not going to get into in this video. I just want you to understand what the domain is. Now, being that we could plug in all um, uh, numbers that are positive or zero into this particular machine, the range, okay, is going to be basically all... Um, not you're not going to the domain. You, I'm sorry, the range is going to be. We're going to have to figure that out separately from the domain. And figuring out the range is more challenging. It's uh, it is more challenging than figuring out the domain. The range can uh, oftentimes require you to look at a graph and you know. But anyways, let's think about it for a second. Just because I can only put positive values into this machine doesn't mean that my range is just all positive values. I can get negative values as well. Like so, for example, the square root of 16 is both plus and ne and minus four. So the range is going to be all values on the real number line. Okay. In other words, all positive values, negative values, and zero. So just because the domain is one thing doesn't mean that the range the range is going to be the same uh, the same thing. Okay. So again, determining the domain is generally requires um, some algebraic skills. Not, it's not too difficult, but the range, a little bit more challenging. I'm going to do, or I probably already have on my channel, I have a lot of videos on there, so I encourage you to subscribe. But um, uh, this gets, you know, we can get more and more and more you know, like deeper into this topic of domain and range functions and relations. It's a huge topic in mathematics, but let's just kind of keep it, uh, uh, you know, uh, at bay with just the things that we just talked about here, because this is a really an introductory video. Okay. So domain and range are what? Well, the domain are all the values that you can plug into a function. Okay. That don't break the function that you, that don't have restrictions on them. Okay. So that's the domain. It's a set of all the numbers that you're allowed to plug into a function. Okay. The range is all the respective output values based upon the input values. So whatever input values you can plug in, okay, the respective output values that you get are the range, okay? Now, just to wrap this up, let's take a look at our first example, this x squared uh, plus 2, okay? So can you think of any values that um, we can't plug in in this particular uh, uh, function? Well, in fact, there's, there is no restrictions in this particular function here. Okay. You can plug in anything you want. And so you could, you know, the, the domain would be all real numbers and your range would also be all real numbers. Okay. But let me give you, let's kind of take a look at this, this, uh, function here and let's change it up for a second. What if I plugged in X squared plus two over X, let's say that was our function rule. Okay. So now I want you to think about the domain. Are there any numbers that we would throw that we could throw into this machine that could end up hurt, <laughs> breaking the machine or hurting the machine? Okay. There's one value. All right. Hopefully you know what that is. There's one value that we, we can't throw into this machine. If we throw it into the machine, it's going to make it blow up. <laughs> you know what that is? It's zero. Okay. So X when X is equal to zero, we get a zero down here in the denominator. We would get zero squared, which is okay, plus two, because zero squared is just zero, but we cannot ever have zero in the denominator. So any values that cause the denominator become zero is not allowed in the domain, okay? So this is also, if you go into your calculator and take seven and divide it by zero, you're gonna get an error, okay? so. Again, just like we had the square root of negative nine over here, there are values that you can't not, we can't calculate in terms of the real number system, and that's what we're working on. Okay, um, again, uh, as you get more advanced in mathematics, then you know we start talking about complex imaginary numbers, etc. But if you just remember these these main concepts that I'm telling you here, you'll have a good firm understanding on domain and range. All right, so let's go and wrap this up. Um, again, I, you know, hope that you, uh, will subscribe to my channel. I do a ton of videos, uh, on, on mathematics, try to, you know, uh, basically explain things in ways that are, 
you know, smaller chunks where things are much easier to understand than, uh, you know, a large, broader concept. But when you do subscribe, by the way, um, if you do choose to uh, subscribe, make sure to hit that bell button. That's how you'll get notifications on, on my videos. I'm doing videos constantly. And of course, you know, if you appreciated the video and you liked it, give, me, give it a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. I try to read as many comments as possible just to see what questions uh, you may have out there. Um, again, on the uh, concept of domain and range, it's, it's part of a larger concept of functions and relations, and there's a lot of, to learn in there. I have a, quite a bit of uh, uh, videos already on my channel, and I'm going to obviously be doing more and more. So leave me some comments. If you have any particular questions, I'll try to uh, you know make a video to answer those. But uh, again, thanks for your time, and uh, have a great day.